What is going on everyone? This is Eric coming at you from just outside of Hartford, Connecticut with a video discussing the 2020 NHL play-in round of the playoffs. So in case you're uncertain, basically what it was is, of course it goes east and west as always, uh, the two conferences. So I'm going to discuss specifically for this example, the west, just because it's a little, I always do the east. Um, So basically, the top two teams in each division in the west, of course the central and pacific division, would qualify for the round robin. So they were already clinched in the playoffs, they had a playoff spot clinched, they were done, they didn't have to worry about anything else. And they were, you know, they were good to go. They had their playoff spot clinched. And after those four teams, you know, the two top two from the Central, top two from the Pacific, what they would do is they ranked the teams based on total points outside of the top four there from each division from five to 12. And then the bottom three teams from the West and the bottom four teams from the East did not make the play-in round. And those teams are, of course, if you go in the East, we'll start off with um, the Ottawa Senators, the Detroit Red Wings, the Buffalo Sabres, and the New Jersey Devils. And in the East, or in the West, I'm sorry about that. Um, in the West, we have the San Jose Sharks, the Los Angeles Kings, and the Anaheim Ducks. So everyone else made the playing round at minimum. So basically, this means teams that were about 500 or a little worse qualified for the playing round uh, case in point Montreal Chicago Arizona wasn't that hot New York Rangers so basically how the round robin worked is I have it here in red um the teams would just play each other and they seated the seating didn't matter originally it was just like okay so right now you know Vegas had the best record so they're the two the one seed and let's just say Dallas had the second best they were the two seed it really didn't matter all that much it's not like you got an advantage each team played one home game one e each team i mean there's no home game there's no road game it doesn't really matter so what happened in the west is vegas ends up walking out with a one seed and they went three oh and oh colorado came in second going two one and oh dallas came in third with a one two and oh record and st louis didn't get a single win suffered two losses in an overtime loss so that's how they did that. They went with OT losses as a tiebreaker. You know, OT points, everything like that as a tiebreaker. It makes sense. In the East, Philadelphia walked out with the one seed with a 3-0-0. Tampa Bay came in second, 2-1-0. Washington came in third with a 1-1-1. And Boston, surprisingly, came in fourth with an 0-3-0. Now, I'll do a quick little my takes here out of how these teams did. So we'll start with the East here for the heck of it. Um, Philadelphia, who? Oh boy, that offense is looking good. And if you're not a Flyers fan, you got to be scared of the Flyers right now. You know, I've been seeing all these people saying, oh, what's wrong with Boston? What's wrong with Tampa? What's wrong with Washington? Why aren't you saying what's right with Philly? You know, Philadelphia is doing great. And this is without Voracek playing. Van Riemsdyk hasn't done that much. Giroux has no points, surprisingly, through the three games. So I'm scared if I'm not a Flyers fan. If I'm a Flyers fan like I am, oh man, I'm hoping. Uh, Tampa Bay looked really good. Of course, Victor Hedman went down in the game against Philadelphia, um, and they announced that Stamkos was out indefinitely after suffering yet another injury. Tampa Bay, they're still an elite team, but they're kind of limping right now. Um, Washington, Braden Holtby kind of needs to go. He's not the answer anymore. He's still a good goalie, but, you know, you kind of kind of hope that you can get him to go. I know a couple of Capitals fans, and uh, one guy told me that he hopes Holtby gets taken in the expansion draft when Seattle eventually joins. So, in Boston, oh my goodness, where to begin? Boston's just looked lost. Boston showed no effort, okay? I really did, wasn't able to watch their games because I was kind of working, and I was in New Hampshire watching a NASCAR race when they played the Flyers, and... Oh, every Bruins fan I talked to is just disheartened. The Bruins look lost. They look like they don't care. So Boston fans, you know, I'm scared if I'm you. All those unfit to plays early on really hurt you. You know, Tuka Rask, Pasternak had COVID, you know, that's just to name a couple. Now, in the West, Vegas went 3-0-0. So Vegas and Philadelphia were the two hottest teams going into the break. And it seems like they still have that momentum going. Of course, 
you're playing teams that you know how to play. So maybe you can say that, but Vegas and Philly possible Stanley Cup final? Maybe. Still too soon to tell. You hear my take tomorrow. Um, Colorado, you know, two and one. That's pretty good. Colorado, you know, they played a key big game against Vegas, and Vegas was just a little better than them. So uh, Dallas, you know, Dallas, I'm a little surprised that they got the three seed. You know, I was kind of joking about them, saying Dallas isn't that good. And then St. Louis dropping to the four. Oh, St. Louis, too. I don't know if there's a Stanley Cup hangover from last year with Boston and St. Louis, but my goodness me, good luck to you guys, too. Uh, we'll start with the West here for how the play-in rounds went. So Edmonton was the 5 seed, taking on the 12 seed Chicago. And to the surprise of many, Chicago took the series three games to one. Now, McDavid, McFranchise, dominated. He led the uh, league in points in the play-in round. But that doesn't matter. If his team isn't playing, it doesn't matter. So Chicago, remember, this is an older team that wasn't expecting to make the playoffs anyway with no goaltender after trading Robin Liner to the Vegas Golden Knights. You know, Chicago has experience. So they're, they're an underdog. They're a team you don't want to face right now. They've got those, you know, a couple Stanley Cups. You don't want to play them. They're, they're a scary team to play. Edmonton was just too new. And, you know, looking back at it, I could see the signs. But And then Arizona was the 11th seed taking on the 6th seed Nashville Predators. And another surprise, Arizona took out Nashville. Now, by surprise, I'm referring to their seeds. So Arizona really looked good. Um, I don't know if they're going to be good enough to get past Colorado, but Arizona looked good. Kessel, that playoff experience he has, is invaluable at this point. And keep in mind, Arizona's GM abruptly quit about a week before the play-in started. So uh, they would take that series three games to one if I didn't say that. Nashville just looked lost. I mean, it's always interesting when you decide to bench Pecorine for another guy, but... Pekka's getting old, and Nashville, honestly, this might have been your last real chance at a cup. Uh, Vancouver was a 7th seed, taking on the 10th seed, Minnesota. And despite the fact that the series was three games to one, it really wasn't that close. Minnesota had one good game, and Vancouver just kind of dominated the rest of the series, from what I saw. Not too, too much to say about that. Uh, Vancouver, though, you know, you get a somewhat easy draw against St. Louis, it's going to be very interesting to see how that game works out. And then Calgary was the 8th seed, taking on the ninth seed Winnipeg Jets. And Calgary won the Battle of Atlanta. Winnipeg just looked lost. Winnipeg lost all these defensive players, and it, it caught up to them. It finally caught up to them. Calgary was able to just cruise past them. Uh, they play Dallas, so I don't know how that's going to go. And on to the East. So we're going to start off with the 5 seed. Pittsburgh Penguins taking on the 12th seed Montreal Canadiens. And to the surprise of the vast majority of hockey fans, myself included, the Montreal Canadiens snuck past and took home a 3-1 to series victory over the Pittsburgh Penguins. If you follow us on Twitter or Instagram, you know I was pumped. You know I was pumped. And then, of course, now they have to match up against the Flyers, which hurts me, but... uh. You know, Montreal taking that upset. Carey Price's playoff experience, invaluable. The Penguins couldn't get their act together. And Montreal snuck out with a victory. Um, I wasn't expecting that. I'm still kind of flabbergasted, and that was a couple days at this point. So congratulations, Canadiens. Um, I would say a couple things to you, but unfortunately, like I said, you're matched up against my Flyers. So, uh... Um, then we get the six seeded Carolina Hurricanes taking on the 11th seed New York Rangers. I had to abbreviate by R and I for the Islanders. Um, Carolina swept them. So Carolina wasn't exactly dominant, but the Rangers just weren't there. The Rangers just weren't on 100%. They just struggled. Um, Carolina, not trying to discredit them, but Carolina's not as good as the Rangers made them look. The Rangers just, unfortunately, it looks like Lundqvist is retiring after this year. And I didn't want to see him get sent out in a sweep. But, you know, the Rangers were a bit of a sleeper because they do have the playoff experience and with Lundqvist and all that. But, unfortunately, it didn't pan out. 
Then we get the seventh seed New York Islanders taking on the 10th seed Florida Panthers. Islanders took that series three games to one. Uh, the Islanders, you know, since losing Tavares, it's just crazy to me that this team's doing that much better despite losing their star. Um, Florida, Florida didn't look that good. They actually fired their GM after this earlier this morning. This is Monday, August 8th, as of the time of record, August 10th, sorry, as of, you know, the recording. And Florida, I don't know what to say, you know, but Bobrovsky, I, you know, I don't even know. Speaking of Bobrovsky and Tavares, interestingly enough, we have Tavares and Bobrovsky's new teams. So Toronto was the 8th seed taking on Columbus's as the ninth team. Uh, Columbus actually lost Bobrovsky. My apologies on that one. And Columbus continues to play, you know, I, I don't know what the heck is going on with Columbus but they lost all these players last season, you know, after the 2018-19 season, and they were still competitive, and they took a best-of-five series, three games to two, over Toronto, a team everybody pegged as a potential sleeper, especially in the playoffs. Oh, my goodness. You know, Toronto had every opportunity, every opportunity. You took a 3-0 deficit, and you tied it, and you end up winning that game in overtime, and then you lose the very next day. I feel bad for Toronto fans. I do. Columbus fans, enjoy your celebration. But I don't know how long it's going to last. I think you're going to finally be outmatched. But for the East at this point, Philadelphia is the one seed taking on, I'm going to reseed them, the eighth seeded Montreal Canadiens. The two seed Tampa Bay will take on the seventh seed Columbus Blue Jackets. The three seed Washington Capitals will be taking on the seventh seed New York Islanders. And the four-seed Boston Bruins will be taking on the five-seed Carolina Hurricanes. I'm not going to give picks yet. In the West, the one-seed Vegas Golden Knights will be taking on the eight-seed Chicago Blackhawks. The two-seed Colorado Avalanche will be playing the seventh-seed Arizona Coyotes. The three-seed Dallas Stars will be playing the six-seed Calgary Flames. And the four-seed St. Louis Blues will be playing the five-seed Vancouver Canucks. Will be very interesting. Tune in tomorrow. We'll be doing a video discussing how we think the 2020 playoffs will go now that the play-in round is done. I may do individual series for series breakdown breakdowns. Probably not, but uh, I'll probably tweet them, you know, just because we don't need all the videos. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, this was the play-in round. Uh, round robin results are on the top in red. And then, of course, the, the actual play-in results are in black with blue highlighting the teams that won. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, definitely make sure to leave a like and subscribe. We do a lot of sports content here. Most of it's going to be hockey, baseball, football oriented at this point in time. Um, once we start getting more and more sports back, I'm going to be more and more excited. I also don't want to have too broad of a net. So expect a lot of baseball and hockey videos for the most part right now. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Have a great rest of your day.